Well, it rained and blew like hell last night. It's kind of an ominous morning to be going for a spin, but we're headed that way. The wind has uh, died out. I suspect we'll be able to uh, go back to where we were yesterday. I'm headed to, to get the ring man now. His dues are done. Stand by, it's a shade after seven. Crack of dawn. Same spot, different day. Tom from PA. Hey. AT Pro and, a, and a, one of uh, Ron's scoops. That's a good scoop for here because there's a lot of stuff here, little stuff. Yeah, yeah, I like How long are you going to be here, Tom? Well, I'm leaving today, unfortunately. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, I got you. Where you live in PA? York, Pennsylvania. York? York, yeah. Okay. About an hour That's where my buddy Joel's from. You know Joel by chance? Uh, he's no, a no, tree, no. he's a tree butcher. Tom just told me that the ring man's already got a ring. You gotta walk over here and see what he's doing over here. That ring man. Can't carry the ring man nowhere, I'm telling you. Rings are in jeopardy. Let's see what the ring man's holding here. Looks like a white gold ring to me. It's heavy. Might be platinum. Oh yeah, it's gotta be platinum. Ain't no way it can be gold. You got a good eyeball? I see right in it, but I can't. Platinum. Are you serious? Platinum? Yep. Okay. <laughs> it's real heavy. Got PLAT right inside of it. Platinum. <laughs> it's heavy as lead. That's how you can tell how heavy it is. Yeah, That's... it's heavy. <laughs> you want to feel how heavy it is, Tom? Starting to breeze up on us a little bit. Slapping us around. much for comfort now. Look at him. In here. Ah. I mean west, the east beach, behind those rocks, see if we can work in those little coves. Stand by, we'll see in a minute. Damn, looks like a hurricane. Rough everywhere. Damn, the bad luck. Too much breeze. Yeah. This ought to be interesting. Give it something to do this morning anyway.
I got nothing else to do, you know. And five meter scent laying right in the sand. The hard rain washed it off, I guess, it was, so it was laying right on the beach this morning. Five meter scent. That's the way I like them. Pick them up. Won't be no fancy layout today either. Newspaper is all you get. Won't be any spin tonight either because we have to take the girls out to eat on Wednesday night. As we have done for years. Wednesday night, mid, what do you call it? Uh, hump week, hump day or some damn thing. Let's see, we got two, I thought we had three quarters. We got no Wheaties, no old nickels. We got two nickels, two quarters, one dime, four pennies, and that, the hell that come from? Some, a screw, another screw, some big piece of aluminum, one bottle cap. Oh yeah, and this fine piece of aluminum. That's it, the roundup is done. See you tomorrow. Crack of dawn. Good luck to everybody. You get to meet uh, Tom. He, he goes as P.A. Tom. You see some pictures of him. He was a, uh, he's been in the land of Nile for three days or four days. I'm not sure. But he missed us the first day we were down there and you know, since it was so poor, we haven't been back. But I talked to him last night. I said, listen, here's where we're going. If you want to meet us there, come on down. And he did. But he had some electronics problems with his headphone plug or something. He was using a Garrett AT Pro and some salt water got into his earbuds. And I think, I think he sent me the picture. I think I'll add it to the back of the video. And I don't think he found any gold while he was in Nada for his few spins. But I can't remember for sure either until I see the video. I mean, see his pictures. But anyway, you'll see what I see. See you later. Good luck, Tom. It was nice meeting you today, buddy. You take it easy. Right, this part of the video is for I.B. Stevie B. He's always asking me about this boat. Well, I.B. Stevie B, this is a Carolina Classic 25 foot. It's got counter rotating props on it. Driven by a Volvo engine. I mean a Chevrolet, but it's a Volvo, you know what I mean? Got like a mini tower on it. It used to belong to Chris's son. For a couple of years. He bought it used, fixed up the engine, and last year he sold it to his his uh, his uncle, Chris's brother-in-law. And they used it for a month or so, and as you have seen in the videos, here it is. In actuality, it's not supposed to be here. Uh, the neighborhood don't like boats in the, in the yards. Chris has lived in this neighborhood for such a long time, they don't say anything to her about it. But this is the only street, or the only house in the neighborhood with a boat. If that tells you anything that you can see. So it's not my boat. I, I'll get to my boats in a minute. Hey Stevie B. I don't know if you'd be able to see these pictures or not, but that's me right there. A few years ago. And that's my son right there. And that's me right there. Steaming around that lighthouse at Cape Henry. If you were to go turn around and go this way, it would be the bay where we turn it at today. Once you make this turn right here, it becomes the land of the Nana. We're right in the middle right now. 
That's where the Pilgrims first landed in 1607. John Smith. Big monument on the beach right there. That's the last boat. No, that's not the last boat. That's the next to the last boat I owned. That's when it was built and launched. That's the party we have. And that's my mother, my daughter, myself, and the guy who built my boat in North Carolina. He was a tr standby. Okay, I be Stevie B. Right now, I am still in the boat business. My daughter and ex-wife have a 23-foot Boston whaler. My son and myself have an 18-foot Boston whaler. We bought it in 2000. Both were bought in 2011, I think. And we fished a lot in 2011 and a lot in 2012. You can go back and see that in the videos. Uh, May through September, mostly. And then 2013, we only went once or twice, and we didn't use it at all last year. But my daughter's been fishing a lot in the last two weeks, so she fishes three or four times a week now in her boat. Fishes for flounders and stuff like that in the rivers in the out by the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Now, where were we? These are all buttons, flat buttons. Mostly Marine Corps British buttons that we find about 25 miles from here. And they're all 18, 20, 18, 30 era buttons. But we very seldom ever hunt for any of this stuff until November would be the earliest we would go. We uh, just don't like the bugs. Too many chiggers, ticks, especially them chiggers. God, that's the worst creature God ever invented. Sometimes we travel to far as Petersburg. We have a buddy of ours has a big farm in Petersburg and we hunt around that for its nearest couple Civil War battles. If you know anything about the Civil War, Petersburg was a big hot spot for battles. Uh, but we've never been, uh, we found a few buttons there. I found my really first nice button there. Uh, what was it? Officer's, Federal Officer's Coat Button. And, and a lot of bullets but you know we find we got two beaches here that are loaded with bullets it's just that it's also loaded with the worst cancer law in the world so we don't go there too often and the neighborhood is a little shaky that's all we got IB Stevie B are Judy Lutz. She want to know if there was a Mrs. Gravedigger. Well I know you've seen Chris in a lot of my videos especially when I was cooking dinner and when we're out to eat. But as far as a Mrs. Gravedigger goes no. Chris is the leader. She is uh, the patriarch. Chris and I have been together since 1989 as a unit. We are not married. We are just together. Uh, it's her house, her truck, her car. She has two children. I have three children. Two of which live here and I have a new son that lives in Florida, Fort Myers. No, well, actually lives in, uh, what the hell's the name of that place? Uh, it's right next to Fort Myers. 
I can't think of it to save my life. Anyway, he's, uh, like I said, a new son. I didn't know I had a new son until 2009, so now I have three children. He's the oldest by uh, two years, I think. His name is Mark Wilson. But that's a long story. But Judy Lutz, her name is Chris, of course. And maybe one day she'll be a Mrs. Gravedigger. We talked about it, but we've never made that step yet. Stand by for the roundup. You get to see a fantastic, well, it ain't very fantastic as far as rings go, but the ring man really found a nice platinum ring today. Not big by any means, but nice. Anytime you find platinum, it's nice. 3.9, no, what do you say? 10.5 grams. So it just does fit over his little pinky finger. But any of you who've ever found platinum, once you find one, you know when you pick that bad boy up, it's not titanium, it ain't stainless steel, it ain't carbon, I mean, uh, what's that other crap we find? Titanium, <laughs> cobalt, it's heavy, heavy with a large H, platinum. And the good thing about platinum is, even though right now gold is higher than platinum, Platinum is pure, so it's worth more than a gold ring the same size. That's a good thing. About, there's nothing wrong with platinum in any shape, form, or otherwise. It took me 17 years to find my first two, and then I found two in one summer and one later on. So I've only found three in 20-some years. And Denny's working on his second year, and he's already got one. I think Low Tide Tim's found three or four. Found two or three in the dry sand for people playing ball and stuff and lost them off their finger. He got a $500 reward in 2010 or 11 for finding one for a guy in the water. Platinum. People like it. And it's nice. But it's really not very pretty. He gets scratches on it and looks bad. But it is nice. Okay, I'm ranting enough. Let's do the roundup and get this show off the road and get ready for tomorrow. Raymond Pena wanted to know about the camera, what time it was, and how did I mount it. Robbie's Homemade Life wanted to know about the cameras I use. Well, 90% of the time, I use a Kodak ZX5, I think they call it. It's a waterproof model. It comes in different colors. I've had good luck with them for if you bought a brand new one and you used it uh, say six months continuously you would have trouble with the hinge right here the little and the doors that lock it in place have a tendency to get sand at them and they freeze up. They got like little ball bearings in there, you know, you have to take those out and pull them up. And then after a while, that little O-ring, seal ring, rubber ring fails and they get water in them. And I have three of these right now. A friend of mine sent me one, which is the one I'm using. And I have another one I bought on eBay for 50 bucks and another one I paid 60 bucks for just for spare. But they work good, they just don't last very long. But they're all waterproof to, I think, 10 feet. Mm, what else we got? Well, somebody wanted to know about the harness. It's just a GoPro chest mounted harness with the pivot adapter and a stainless steel bolt cut off and screwed into that, and the camera screws onto that. I got a video on that somewhere. There's one more question we got to answer. 